I believe what makes us different is our vision. We are more than just one coin. This is Dr. Ruja Ignatova. She's a visionary. One coin can provide banking for everyone, and this is my vision. She's a billionaire. She's the charismatic founder of One Coin. Now, she's on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. How did this woman from a small town in Germany build a global cult from scratch, lie to millions of people, scam billions of dollars, and eventually disappear mysteriously, never to be seen again? This is the story of the missing crypto queen. This is Gajetto, where we take a closer look at everything business, tech, and life. Sit back and enjoy. Dr. Ruja Ignatova was born in Bulgaria in 1980. At the age of 10, she and her parents emigrated to a small town in southern Germany. She studied at the University of Oxford, earned her PhD in law and later went on to work for one of the most prestigious consulting companies on the planet, McKinsey. It's important to understand her unusually high intelligence as she quickly realized that the Bitcoin story had evolved to the equivalent of a gold rush and many outside the crypto world felt an immense amount of FOMO. The crypto community, back then even more, was an isolated and very gated community, using a very distinct language creating quite high hurdles for the average person to get into. So Ignatova creates a new company where the masses of ordinary people can easily invest in and participate in the overall crypto boom. Together with her boyfriend at the time, she founded OneCoin in 2014. OneCoin is supposed to be the next big thing, caressing people with the prospect of realizing huge gains in a very short time. It is supposed to be the one chance for everyone who missed Bitcoin to get their piece of the pie. In fact, the press calls it the Bitcoin killer, and Dr. Ruja Ignatova loves that phrase. Well, I must say I like it. The marketing of OneCoin has a very clear goal. Leave no doubt that the future holds incredible wealth with highly expensive cars and over-the-top parties. Within less than a year, the meteoric rise of OneCoin created a cult-like following with even songs being written about it. One coin, come and be part of a movement. One coin, a financial revolution. And masses joining the many events. But why was OneCoin so successful? Was it their tech? What actually is OneCoin? Let's have Scott Melker explain to us the concept of the blockchain and what makes it so special. What I've found myself doing, which is really fun, is I've started to play Monopoly with my six-year-old daughter. And what I did to start uh, explaining to her more about Bitcoin was that I got rid of all of the money in Monopoly and made us transact and, and keep a ledger of the transactions of the game. So every time someone buys something, we take it off their written. You know, we do this written and we, and we take it off of their ledger. If somebody, uh, you know, hits free parking or something, we add the money. So we're keeping this list of transactions. And when you do it with more than two people, it's a lot of fun. And obviously there's challenges to it. Like you have to make sure that nobody's cheating, adding a zero, anything like that. So basically what we do is we each keep our own ledger and then every 10 or 15 minutes we go in and we make sure that the ledger is correct. And I find this to be a perfect analogy for a child who can understand the game of Monopoly for what Bitcoin is and how the blockchain works. Obviously you have the payment records, which is like a block. And then you have a network of all of us sharing it, which is each of our individual ones. And then every time we do a checkpoint at 10 or 15 minutes, that's sort of like a block being confirmed. And the fact that we have multiple people shows that there's no centralized authority. It's decentralized and it's peer to peer. So I've found that playing the game of Monopoly without the physical money has been the simplest way to start explaining to my kids and her friends about Bitcoin. The way in which Bitcoin, for example, quote unquote, prints new Bitcoins is its mining. So compute power basically verifies integrity in exchange for new Bitcoins. OneCoin, on the other hand, doesn't have any of that. In fact, Ruja just gave out as many OneCoins as she wanted to. When asked about their blockchain and how it works, they always answered that it is confidential and not open to the public for security reasons. A big red flag to people with crypto knowledge a reasonable argument to people who trust Dr. Ignatova with their life savings. 
And while you can trade your traditional cryptocurrencies on various exchanges at a price that is regulated by the blockchain and its ledger, there was no exchange for one coin and the price was simply an imaginary one they put on their webpage. Instead, they kept promising and promising to introduce their new exchange to trade one coin. This exchange one day will be switched on and be a global exchange for everyone. And yet, they never delivered. That's one of the biggest problems as there was basically no way to exchange your one coins back into traditional or cryptocurrency. You simply were stuck with your one coins. There was a small exchange in which you could apply for a small payout of your one coin, but these applications were also sometimes rejected. Additionally, there is their proprietary marketplace deal shaker, which must be the worst marketplace we have seen to date. But if people weren't able to generate returns, how could it be they kept investing? By 2016, more than 3 million investors globally had invested more than $4 billion. That is because some of the investors in fact made millions of dollars by referring new investors. How did that work? To lure in new investors, it was crucial for OneCoin to be able to show the success of existing investors to underline that investments in OneCoin provide proven returns. But it was only worth it to a few early investors in this pyramid scheme. Let's take a closer look at how these systems work and why it's only lucrative for a few. A common type of fraud where members make money by recruiting more people to buy in. Typically, the founder solicits an initial group of people to buy in and promote the scheme. They are then encouraged to recruit others and promised part of the money those people invest, while the founder also takes a share. The pattern repeats for each group of new participants, with money from recent arrivals funneled to those who recruited them. This differs from a Ponzi scheme, where the founders recruit new members and secretly use their fees to pay existing members who think the payments come from a legitimate investment. As a pyramid scheme grows, it becomes increasingly difficult for new recruits to make money. That's because the number of participants expands exponentially. Take a structure where each person has to recruit six people to earn a profit. The founder recruits six people to start, and each of them recruits six more. There are 36 people in that second round of recruits, who then each recruit six people a total of 216 new recruits. By the 12th round of recruiting, the 2.1 billion newest members would have to recruit over 13 billion more people total to make money. With this type of sales practice, there were very aggressive sales events all around the world with speakers trying to convince the masses to buy one of the various starter packages of OneCoin. And in fact, a few of them got rich, very rich. This table shows that some of them received more than $200 million in referral pyramid fees. Oh, and that number is their weekly income, by the way. For the vast majority of the 3 million investors, on the other hand, there was no revenue from these referrals. It was these masses that didn't understand crypto, the blockchain, or how OneCoin really worked. And human psychology simply replaced the bits and pieces they knew nothing about with something they could understand and put into perspective. A smart businesswoman who studied at one of the best universities of the world holds a PhD in work at a prestigious consulting firm. This is how Dr. Rujay Ignatova became the iridescent personification of OneCoin and the opportunity for all the ordinary people who feared to have missed out on Bitcoin, but essentially had no clue what they had invested in. But what was the tech that they had invested in? We will retire the old blockchain and switch on the new one. 49, and now it starts blinking. I think it's done soon. I think we are mining about 2 billion coins now. Oh, it's a slow block. Three seconds. Now go, 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 mine. And it's a lot of coins to be mined. Yes, we did it! We mined 1.986580,000 coins, guys. All the ultimate packages and all of you now should have double coins. Congratulations! And yet, only six days later, crypto expert Bjorn Bjerke gets contacted by a headhunter with a request for him to build a blockchain for a crypto company. He said it was a cryptocurrency startup in uh, Bulgaria. He was interested in, you know, my profile and if I could fit as their global 
CTO, Chief Technical Officer. And uh, if I was interested, and I said, well, what's the company's name? And he didn't want to say it. There was a lot of good things. Uh, I would get an apartment in Bulgaria, I would get a car, I would uh, get a, a quite large salary, probably about 250,000 pounds yearly. So that was quite high. I was thinking, well, what is my job going to be? Like, what, what are things that I'm going to have to do for this company? And I said, well, first of all, they need a blockchain. They don't have a blockchain today. I said, what? He told me it was a cryptocurrency company. He's like, yeah, there's a cryptocurrency and it's been running for a while, but they don't have a blockchain. So we need you to build a blockchain. So what are you assuming at this point? You're, you've, that, that there's a database that they have created what, pretending to have a cryptocurrency, but running it through a normal database? Exactly. And I said, what is the company's name? And then he said, it's OneCoin. I called back Monday morning to tell them that I didn't want to take the position. With the help of some other experts and OneCoin investors, they get the following statement. The statement is read by an actor. So I started asking my OneCoin leaders, was there a blockchain and... I want answers, and uh, that's when I get the voice message back. Okay, Jen, is there a blockchain and where is it? Yes, there is a blockchain. The reason they can't disclose it is mainly because One Life Group is a very big network and they don't want to disclose that kind of information, just in case something goes wrong where the blockchain is being held. And plus, as an application, it doesn't need a server behind it. So it's our blockchain technology, a SQL server with a database. Well, I knew at this point the, the information that Tim had gave, I'd started to do my own research and, and learn more about blockchain technology. And I knew a SQL Server database couldn't create genuine cryptocurrency. So to receive that voice message saying it was a SQL Server database with OneCoin's technology at the back end of it, I thought, what? And I literally, my legs just went and I fell in the floor. Jen was talking almost every day with Tim. Tim put Jen in touch with Bjorn, that's the blockchain expert you just heard, in case she had any more questions about the technology. Bjorn was driving at the time and I shared this message. Did he just say that it's a blockchain technology on an SQL database? He just said that. I listened to it three times. Blockchain technology on an SQL database? What the fuck is that? I just can't believe what I just heard. He said, blockchain technology on an SQL database. That proves my point. Like, I mean, hello? Bell ringing. It is clear that at the time, OneCoin didn't have a blockchain. They didn't have a real cryptocurrency. All they had was a pyramid scheme without a real underlying product. And they had cash. So much cash. In fact, they tried to spend it to get rid of some, but it kept coming and kept coming. So they built safes in their offices in Bulgaria, Dubai and Hong Kong. They rented apartments in Hong Kong and Seoul and stacked them full of cash. They even bought an entire petroleum gas field on the west coast of Madagascar from a Chinese company. Oh, and by the way, this Chinese company was advised by Neil Bush, brother of former US President George W. Bush, and the Chinese paid him $300,000 for the facilitation. This showcase of money left no doubt with the many investors that one coin couldn't be worthless. It couldn't be. In 2016, more and more experts got suspicious of OneCoin. It is now that there are several investigations launched in Germany, Finland, Bulgaria, Sweden, Norway, Lithuania and in 2017 also the US. The loss due to OneCoin's fraud is valued at $4 billion. Other estimates even speak of $15 billion. Regulators blacklisted OneCoin and banks closed accounts linked to it. In 2017, Dr. Ignatova began to make contingency plans, visiting Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia to procure a passport. At the same time, her personal life was on the rocks. She was planning to elope with a married man named Gilbert Armenta, but she grew suspicious that he was stringing her along. In fact, Mr. Armenta was cooperating with federal authorities and FBI agents later in court. Mr. Armenta pleaded guilty to wire fraud. 
money laundering and extortion conspiracy charges related to OneCoin and is awaiting sentencing. In October 2017, Dr. Ignatova was set to hold a speech in Lisbon, Portugal. However, somehow she had found out that Mr. Armenta, her boyfriend at the time, was an FBI informant. After weeks and months with increasing pressure by banks, regulators and authorities, this was the straw that broke the camel's back and Dr. Ruja Ignatova bolted. In fact, she had always had that plan as we know today. Her brother bought two plane tickets, one to Vienna, Austria, and one to Athens, Greece. She flew to Athens with only her purse and one of her security guards. On the ground, she is picked up by two Russian-speaking men and has not been seen since. Where is Dr. Ruja? There were rumors, of course, lots of them. Rumors of her traveling back and forth between Russia and Dubai. It's also been suggested that there are powerful people who might protect her in her native Bulgaria and that she could hide in plain sight because of plastic surgery that makes her unrecognizable. There are rumors that she might be in London or Frankfurt. And of course, some say she is long dead. In the end, Dr. Ruja Ignatova destroyed the lives of millions of people. Many told their friends and families about OneCoin and lost all of their money. After her disappearance, her brother Constantin took over OneCoin and was later arrested in Los Angeles. Ignatov pleaded guilty to several charges, including money laundering and fraud. He faces up to 90 years for his role in this fraud. Dr. Ruja's ex-boyfriend and alleged co-founder of OneCoin, Sebastian Greenwood, was arrested in 2018 by US authorities and was charged with wire fraud and money laundering. Despite all that, OneCoin is still not dead. Early 2022, there was again a big event in Colombia, reiterating the same old brave talk about launching the OneCoin exchange very soon. Their DealShaker website is still online and operational, but at least their website was taken down in late September. OneCoin wasn't the first scam around crypto and it most definitely won't be the last. There are hype trains around every corner, but... Guys, we hope you enjoyed the content and found it entertaining. If so, please like the video and subscribe for more content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified for future content.